Okay, we're going to give you some hints now on the aquarium lab. And one of the things that's a little bit more challenging about the aquarium lab is when you get to the last two creatures, the octopus and the turtle, uh, they, the movements start to get a little bit more sophisticated. The turtle, for example, has momentum. So if you hold down one of the movement keys, the turtle will accelerate. And then if you let go of the key, it will slow down before it stops. And so we wanna talk a little bit about how we accomplish all that in code. Some of you have had physics, I'm guessing most of you have not, but just from your middle school science classes, I suspect you still have enough information to get you through this lab well, but I'm going to review a few of the properties that perhaps haven't been foremost in your mind these last few months. So let's take a look at some scenarios. I'm gonna draw a graph here and here I'm going to put T and here I'm going to put S. And does anybody remember from your middle school or maybe high school science classes, what do the variables T and S stand for here? Ms. Mullen, what do you think the variable T stands for? Time. That stands for time. And any idea what S stands for? S stands for distance. So I'm going to draw some graphs now. I'm going to ask you what is happening to the particle or the object that's being described by this graph. So the first one we're gonna look at is this one right here. And what I want to know is, is the object moving or staying still? If it's moving, is it accelerating or is it moving at the same velocity? You can think of this S as the distance from the origin, the distance from the origin, okay? So the question now is, what is happening to the particle described by the red line? Constant velocity. So if it was constant velocity as time passes, what would be happening to the distance variable? Okay, so therefore, particle is stationary. It's stationary. It's not moving. What's happening with this particle? Mr. Bellow, what do you think is happening here, sir? It's just constantly moving. It's constantly moving. My question to you, sir, is the speed or the velocity is it constant or is it changing as time is changing? Well, it's, constant. it's constant. So this is an example of constant velocity. Is there some way, mathematically speaking, that I can say that it's constant velocity? The slope of the line is fixed. It doesn't change. And so therefore, this is constant velocity. Question, if the particle was accelerating, what would that graph look like? It would be some sort of curve like this. You can see that if I was to draw little slope lines here, you could see that their values are changing as time changes. So this would be an example of a particle. Is this particle increasing its speed or decreasing its speed? It's increasing, it's accelerating. If it was gonna be like this, that would be decelerating. What is the difference between speed and velocity? Okay, so speed just has a magnitude, how fast are you going? But velocity also incorporates the idea of direction. So for example, if I was going to say 60 miles per hour, and if I was gonna say 60 miles per hour due north, you can see that that's a speed and that's a velocity. Make sense? Okay, question. I want you to imagine now that we have our green foot. So imagine that this is the green foot window. And imagine that we have a clownfish here. Here's the clownfish. And the clownfish is moving in this direction at a constant velocity. In this case, velocity just determines, for a clownfish, it just determines is it going to the right or going to the left. Now, my question is, what would be the right units for us to use to describe the velocity of the clownfish? Should we use miles per hour like we do for a car? What should we use instead if we're writing a program? What would be the units? We don't even write the units when we code it, but it's sort of implied. The units are implied. 
What I'd like to know is, what are the units for, for velocity inside a graphics system like this one? First of all, let's agree whether miles per hour is reasonable or not to use in a Greenfoot system. What do you think? Mr. Baker, what do you think, sir? No. Not reasonable. Tell me why, sir. Okay, so instead of miles per hour, can I make it inches per hour or inches per second? Would those be good metrics to use for the velocity of a clownfish? Those would not work for us because you'll notice that we can adjust the speed of the, how fast the program runs at the bottom of our uh, Greenfoot application. We need some other metric or some other units, I should say, to describe how much the clownfish is moving. Now, when we're talking about a car, we talk about distance, right? Distance, which is going to be either S or D. Those are the two variables you usually use for distance. So I'll just use uh, S here. And it's over time. It's over time. In a graphic system, the concept of time is not usually measured in seconds. It's measured in turns, and the distance is not usually measured in miles or inches or feet. What is distance measured on in a graphics system? Yes, sir. Is it pixels? It's pixels. So the velocity of a clownfish or an octopus or a starfish is going to be measured in pixels per turn. And what I mean by turn is when it's its turn to go. So what I'm saying here is that every time it's the clownfish's turn to go, how many pixels does it move? So this is going to be the units on our velocity for an animal inside our aquarium. So here we have our aquarium. Now you notice that the aquarium shape is a little bit different than you last saw it because yesterday I went back and I change the size of the aquarium to these numbers. I want you to pick some numbers that will fit well on your screen for your laptops. I want it to be not too high, but I want it to be nice and long. Uh, so basically kind of a, a, a thin but long aquarium for we're going to use, um, we're going to try and speed up some animals here. And I want to have some room to work with from left to right in order to see what's going on. So I don't want this, the aquarium to be square. So let's go back to our friend, the clownfish. And let's make sure it's still working. It is. And you can see here that the clownfish is going right here across the screen. If I look at the clownfish right here, and I can see what's going on over here, uh, I'll just set this to a three so that the numbers don't confuse us. And uh, let's look at this clownfish and try and figure out which of these numbers represents the velocity of the clownfish. <clears throat> so I need a number, sir. How, how fast is the clownfish moving? If, if, I, if I was to tell you about the speed of a car and I said this, the car is traveling at 40 miles, is that a speed? Five pixels per turn. So you agree then that this particular clownfish is moving, velocity is equal to five pixels per turn. Now we don't usually write the pixels per turn part, but that's implied here. You agree with that, right? What would it mean if I have a minus five here? Mr. Owen, what do you think would happen, sir, if I ran this code right now? It would be going backwards. Let's try that. you can see it will go backwards. So you can see that this is a velocity and not a speed because direction is implied by whether it's a negative number or a positive number. That's why it's a velocity and not a speed. Now, you were looking at this, you say this is constant velocity. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change it up a little bit and I'm gonna introduce a property or an attribute to the count class, a uh, clownfish class. I'm gonna call it velocity, I'm gonna say, um, and when I uh, start up the clownfish, so here I'm gonna go public clownfish. This is my constructor. I'm gonna initialize that velocity. I'm gonna set it to the five that I have right here. So I'm gonna go velocity 
equals five like that and i'm going to you know what let me uh let me make this a little bit fancier here let's go private static final uh initial velocity equals five i'll do this the right way and then i will use this initial velocity here and the reason i'm doing this is that I need to put integer here sorry the reason I'm doing this is that this is a much cleaner way to code. I don't want to have magic number like five stuck in my code. I'd rather put it up here so that it can be changed easily. All right. And you learned about static today. So now you know what this all means. So now when the clownfish first is born, I tell it what its initial velocity is going to be. And then what do I want to replace this five with here? Do I want to replace it with initial velocity or this velocity variable? Okay, I should put velocity here in case I decide to change it later. Remember, this is a constant. It can't be changed. So now, once again, the clownfish is going to move five pixels per turn. Let's, let's look at that. And you can see it's working just as before. And you might be asking yourself, well, why did we bother with that? that it works just the same. But now, because I have this velocity captured as a state variable or an attribute the beauty of it is that now i can change it like this for example i can go like this now without running this i want you to describe what's going to happen when i run it now is the clownfish going to move at the same velocity all the time each time it goes each time it takes a turn the velocity is going to be increased by one so in terms of the graphs that I showed at the beginning of class today, what would you say, how would you describe the motion of the clownfish in this scenario? It's going to be accelerating. Very good. So let's look at that. Can you see that it's speeding up? Look, it's going faster and faster. Do you see that? Now let's try a different experiment. Try to discuss with your partner. I've got this initial velocity, then I've created this other number, which is a decimal number. And now I am, and what I want to know is how am I adjusting the velocity here each time the clownfish goes? And what's going to be the behavior when the clownfish is swimming around on the screen this time? Let's try this out. Can you see it slowing down? And eventually comes to a stop. So what I'm doing here, I'm sort of simulating something that you see in the real world. Why is the clownfish slowing down? What's causing it to slow down? When you're swimming in the water, what's the hardest thing that's keeping you from going faster? Yes, miss? Water resistance. It's got a more generic term in physics, friction. So here I'm modeling some sort of friction factor, which is slowing the clownfish down. You're going to need something like this when you work on the turtle. So those are my hints for you today on the aquarium lab.